Tutakutana kwa bunge tuseme sani. Umundu umundu hita. Now, Buruburu is one of the oldest and most revered estates in Nairobi. For a long time, residents have enjoyed peace and harmony and has not known any threat. On our special assignment tonight, our reporter Victor Enzobelli delves into allegations that there are quote-unquote cartels that have grabbed public land and set up illegal constructions. Just how true is this? Well, here is the battle for Buruburu's soul. In the heart of Buruburu, a once stylish neighborhood that boosted elegant designs and pristine streets, a disheartening transformation has taken place. The air now hangs heavy with an unsavory stench, while the streets are marred by an overwhelming presence of discarded refuse. What was once a symbol of elegance has now become a testament to neglect, with drainage systems struggling to cope with the weight of this gradual decay. It's a story of urban beauty lost, a narrative that beckons for redemption and revival. Joseph Kinara, Buruburu Residents Welfare Association Chairman, points an accusing finger at the grim state of the community. He attributes this distressing transformation to a tale of true culprits, poor leadership and rampant corruption. These twin issues have conspired to usher in an era where towering high-rises, raucous bars and pulsating nightclubs have trampled upon the very essence of the estate. In their relentless pursuit of profit, they've cast a shadow over the once attractive landscape, leaving residents yearning for the restoration of the cherished neighborhood. My name is Joseph Kinar, the chairman of Buruburu Resident Welfare Association. Yes, where we are, we are in Buruburu phase five, where we have had a problem with this construction behind me, which has gone beyond uh, the limit of uh, our bylaws. We only agree that a building can only go to second floor, and this one behind you can see, it has been built beyond second is third floor, which has deprived the residents privacy and security. Somebody in the third floor is able to oversee all the other houses from top of uh, his house. So our residents are feeling uh, their security has been taken away and they feel they are not safe. And uh, therefore, we have been appealing to various agencies. Uh, we had uh, written to Nairobi City Council Physical Planning uh, not to approve anything beyond second floor. And this continued uh, the house to the same level. We have also had written to Nairobi, the NCA, National Construction Company, we had written to them, who came and gave a notice, but the developer did not stop there. They continued and uh, as you can see, the building is being completed or has been completed and has now tenants in it. Residents of Sagam Court, for instance, in Buruburu Phase 5, have staged complaints regarding a new structure in the court that they claim is illegal. Documents seen by EBN TV indicate that members of the Welfare Association wrote to the Office of the Ministry of Interior and Coordination of National Government opposing the construction of the building. Despite allegedly obtaining no approvals from the National Construction Authority and National Environment Management Authority, the developer went ahead and directed the building much to the disappointment of the residents. So I am requesting for the government to come and see what is happening here. And those people who are arresting even the Buruburu police station, we ask them to stop harassing the Buruburu people because they know what they are asking for. They are asking for their light which has been denied for a very, very long time. And the time has come that now we have said enough is enough. We are going to do something called affirmative action. We are going to make sure that our Buruburu will go where it came from. The most annoying thing is how the chief and uh, the assistant chief 
have dealt with this issue from the very beginning. They were aware, we told them, we told the people in the county, yet they did not stand with us. But now that the building is complete, they are here every day. And the chief is actually here. He was here this morning, he was here yesterday, he was here the day before. So you can see, what interest, even this afternoon, what interest is it of his to be coming here? What is it that this developer has given him for him to be coming and bringing tenants? Is he part of the development? Is he part of the ownership of this house or what? So those are some of the questions that we are asking and we, we want answers. Uh, as a resident, uh, this is not right and we need to be heard. Uh, this building from the beginning to the end, uh, it has been constructed uh, contrary you know, to the laws uh, of the land, the laws that are existing. And I think in this country we have seen uh, other buildings that have come down, you know, and as such it presents for us, uh, uh, you know, a safety and a security challenge. And these are some of the issues that uh, we, we, we have raised and unfortunately we have not uh, been heard. What has been happening is that uh, the authorities have been aiding, you know, uh, the residents uh, uh, coming and in exchange of that then the officials uh, have been threatened. So. Uh, we think that is not uh, that is not right. If you look at the way uh, these courts uh, are set up, you know, uh, they were set up in such a way that there is privacy, uh, there is there is security, you know, and that has been breached uh, as as uh, as as we talk now. The residents who are coming in, they are lying. Each and every house here has a number, but the residents are lying that uh, they are going to different uh, houses, and then they do come. Uh, to this uh, uh, to this house and therefore compromising uh, the overall uh, uh, security of the court our children used to play around here now i also feel frustrated because the city council the nema the nca they were coming and writing that the house is not supposed to continue the work used to continue even during the night at night we are hearing kokoko every time then the city council and sometimes the national construction, there were times they used to come and remove the mambati, which was being put there to safeguard the construction. They remove. Then it happened that I was summoned to the police station in Buruburu to go and uh, to help in uh, investigations. When I went there, I was told the lady of the house had reported that I, together with another old lady who is our neighbor here, we removed the, that, the gate, something which we never did. It was very, very frustrating. Up to now, any time me I get out, I feel bad because the way things were here, since we came into this place in 1982, we've never had such a problem. We were living peacefully, but now our peace has been compromised. Despite fervent attempts to seek justice, residents here have encountered a frustrating wall of silence. Their calls to the local police and the area chief have fallen on deaf ears, leaving them with a disheartening suspicion that collusion runs deep between the local authorities and the unscrupulous developer responsible for the illegal buildings. In a disturbing turn of events, these beleaguered residents now find themselves summoned by the very institution that they feel and think is meant to protect them. They gathered courage and made their way to Puruburu Police Station, accompanied by United Community determined to confront this looming injustice head-on. However, the quest for answers was met with yet another challenge. The elusive deputy OCS, the individual they claim is responsible for their summons, remained elusive, leaving the residents in a disheartening state of limbo. Uh, my name is Isaac. I've lived in this community for 50 years. And uh, what we are seeing here is an anarchy where leaders have been compromised, uh, police have been compromised, county officials have been compromised, and people can build four stories, five stories, and nothing is happening. The officials of Sagam Court was summoned to, to appear today uh, by the deputy OCS, and uh, the time we turned up at the station, uh, we have been chased out of the station and told the deputy OCS is not in. We come another day, that is Thursday, that is when he'll be here. And uh, 
the only summoners when uh, they see many of us have turned up in support of the intimidation. Uh, I think they have shied and told us to get out of the station. They don't want a crowd. And we said we'll stand firm, solidarity, uh, with our uh, summoned officials. So we know and feel that uh, they are taking sides. That's why we are here. And uh, we'll stand with them to the last uh, level. We want justice to be done to our people. We want justice to be given to the Buruburu residents. We not allow anybody to intimidate us this time when we are trying to look for our share of justice. We need peace in Buruburu Phase 5. Whoever is putting up those illegal structures in Phase 5 is encroaching on our privacy. We are property owners in Buruburu Phase 5 and we also need peace of mind. And we want our police officers here in Buruburu to take care of us and uh, protect us from harassment. The other day we had a chief coming over and destroying our locks. A, a chief and the sub-chief, we have photographs, we have evidence. Let the law be followed the way it's supposed to be followed. We don't feel like we are being harassed or like we are not supposed to be in this country. These, these are the locks that were broken. So let us get fairness as Buruburu residents. Gila Court, neighbors, a shopping centre. This shopping centre has now turned out to be a beer centre. There are 17 bars that play loud music and we don't sleep. Even today I didn't sleep and uh, we have been seeking help from the county government who licensed these bars. But unfortunately, the same county government officials drink in Buruburu and that is why I hope we will not get justice. So we are requesting the authorities, please don't license nightclubs in a residential area so that we can also enjoy our sleep. In a very interesting turn of events, while covering the poor state of Buruburu estate, my team and I were harassed by individuals believed to have received instructions from someone with great interest in the development. Might this be an incident of power and affluence taking center stage? It's a disheartening transformation. An area once celebrated for its immaculate streets and serving ambience is now grappling with challenges that mar its once idyllic reputation. The debris of disregard stains its character, and the looming shadows of land grabbers threaten its foundation. As the pages of this chapter unfold, one can only hope for collective action and responsible leadership. After all, like a story has the power to change its narrative. Victor Enzo Belli, Special Report for EBN TV.